much for us. He has to address council regarding lightning vision zero carbon emissions central city plan. Good morning. My name is Lightning. I represent Lightning Super Watchdog. Can't hear you. Is the light on? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, again, my name is Lightning. I represent Lightning Super Watchdog PDX. One of the concerns I've stated is on clean air through the central city boundaries. If we have a map that shows those boundaries. I do not approve of any diesel vehicles, particulates being scattered out through our communities, through the areas downtown. We don't need to have that happening anymore. You can go to electric buses. We have TriMet, we have streetcar. We don't need to allow any trucks downtown. If you research the effects it has on young children, it is devastating and it also kills. We do not need to allow that to take place anymore within a certain parameter of downtown where we have the highest population base. We can enforce this now, we can put restrictions in, and we don't have to allow this to happen anymore. The city needs to stand up and understand how serious this is. Issue number two on the exclusion ordinance. Again, as the ruling stated from Federal Judge Michael Simon, you will be considered unconstitutional if you try to exclude somebody past the meeting of up to 24 hours. Again, where your attorneys have miscalculated, ACLU has miscalculated, is that if you exclude me for six months and I find you unconstitutional in front of a judge again, I at that point will turn back around and look at the city and say, you have violated open meetings law, you are unconstitutional, and I will demand that I have a right to go over every issue on that agenda for the last six months, which you've approved, and I will overturn that legally, and those will be considered null and void. The city will have to come back to me, allow me to go over each and every item on that agenda, and let me tell you the cost that will be to you. Your grants will be stopped in place, your construction will be stopped in place, Everything that you're going to pass in this room will be stopped in place because you will be determined unconstitutional in violation of open meetings law. As far as on that exclusion ordinance, put it on the shelf, redo it, it's not going to pass muster, and the attorneys are going to have a field day with all of you, and politically, you'll all be finished. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yay. Make Cohen to address council regarding emergency response protocol and policy improvements. Good morning. Good morning. Uh huh. I think only one of those mics. Yeah. One mic. All right. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. yeah. Come back to you. Okay. Right, thanks. Uh, my name is Nate Cohen. I'm a spokesman from Howard Portland. Um, and I wanted to speak to you today a little bit about some of our concerns moving forward. Um, I was an EMT for five years. I spent most of that time uh, overseas doing international relief work in conflict zones. So um, I say that because I have a lot of experience dealing with these sorts of crazy medical situations and crises that can come up. And have been coming up very, very frequently um, on our own streets here recently. Um, we're deeply concerned about the weaponry that's being deployed against the citizens. I wanted to highlight some of those because I think we would want to buy uh, most people to know what those things are. Stinger grenades, uh, which have been used since January 20th. Stinger grenades are uh, a grenade that, when exploding, shoots a spray of pellets in a radius of 50 feet. Those pellets travel at 150 miles an hour and are covered in chemical agents. The weapons are designed to impact your skin, causing trauma, so the chemical agents get into your bloodstream. They can also be modified to contain CS, CN gas, and have a flashbang effect. Uh, tear gas and CS gas. Uh, tear gas and CS gas are illegal for international warfare in 175 countries as of the 1993 chemical uh, weapons and may only be used by the U.S. military after verbal consent by the President of the United States. Uh, and yet, it has been deployed numerous times on the streets of Portland against its citizenry. Um, once it is deployed, tear gas is uncontrollable. It can walk for blocks. 
On January 20th, people were exposed as far away from Pioneer Square as Dean Donuts and Arch. <coughs> it sits in the area for 20 to 30 minutes and can travel up to a half a mile depending on wind speeds. So we should all be deeply concerned that that's getting used in a densely populated area like downtown. Uh, saving rent. <coughs> Uh, it is the most toxic version of pepper spray available. It is four times more powerful than that available for commercial use. And if it sits in your eyes or throat for more than five minutes, it can cause permanent damage, scarring, or blindness. Uh, there has been no study that has shown that it's more effective than the less toxic and less powerful versions of the spray. Um, and the next step down is half as dangerous for people to be exposed to. So why are we using the military-grade stuff that can literally take people's eyes right away? Uh, kinetic impact projectiles, frequently referred to as rubber bullets. Um, these have a 70% rate of causing severe or critical injury. 70% of severe or critical injury. A uh, recent study showed that in 90, inc uh, 90 instances of their deployment, there was one fatality, 17 long-term and permanent disabilities, seven, uh, uh, 41 instances of um, long-term hospitalization, and then that 70% rate, right? So anytime it gets in something other than your leg or your arm, it's almost always going to cause a permanent injury. This is deeply concerning. Uh, if we're going to be a progressive city, if we're going to be a forward thinking city, there's got to be a better way than this. We're turning the city into a war zone. We're throwing grenades at unarmed people. The tear gas comes out of a grenade launcher. A woman on January 20th was stuck in the head by one of those canisters. Fired from a grenade launcher 20 feet away from her. Caused her a great deal of depression that she had four inch laceration to break out. This is not the way we should be running our streets. Um, we got to do better. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. pump station, which is located in Willamette Park uh, near the OPB studios. The Hannah Mason pump station replaces the Fulton pump station, which is our hey, can I get a video pump of that? station, this? 1912. No. It's our highest seismic risk and the highest right, thing you. to replace yeah. on our <laughs> asset management protocol. The pump station is the first large <laughs> infrastructure named after a woman. Um, Hannah Mason was a I'm not going to get arrested as soon as I leave. She was a You're widow of former no, mayor, William S. Mason, and Ms. Mason they made a mistake on my, 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 my sentencing judgment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, the new I, pump I'm station only excluded if the, the to save uh, leadership, uh, you know, the, the, like the mayor, mm -hmm. kicks me out. Mm -hmm. But on, on the judgment, the it says that I'm going to immediately and vacate any city building. So I'm going to challenge him on that. I'm going to challenge him on that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that greatly saves energy. 
The payback on the energy features of this project are only three years. <sighs> a quick payback on energy. So in addition to the 499000 and we're debating which one of us is going to cough up the budget to make it 500000 um, it will also save annually $163,000 in, in energy costs. Um, I often get the credit by sitting up here for things, but I don't really do very much in the world. Um, I'd like to recognize a few people who had something to, to do with the project. Teresa Elliott, our chief engineer, if you wave back there. Dave Evanuk, who was the project manager during planning and design. Uh, Dave masterminded extensive coordination with the community around there and working with Parks Bureau. Keith Walker, I know you're back there, wave your hand. Uh, he was the pump station program manager from inception through construction. He was deeply involved throughout the project and also coordinating the Parks Bureau because we're basically camped on the edge of the park. Uh, Mike Ross provided technical assistance during design and he's the one that worked most with Energy Trust on the energy features of the project. Tom Levitt was the project manager for construction. He's been living out there for over a year. Carol Lane, assistant in coordination with the Parks Bureau, the neighbors, and the health advisory committee we had on the project. Um, this is not only energy efficient, it's very sustainable, and it's even bird friendly, if you can imagine the big block you build with the bird friendly. Um, and last but not least, Blair Hassler is the program re representative from the Energy Trust uh, who worked with us on this project. So now I'd like to turn it over to Mike. So good morning, Mayor Wheeler and Commissioners. Good morning. My name is Michael Colgrove, and I'm the Executive Director of the Energy Trust of Oregon. Uh, I'm pleased to be here today to commend the city uh, for your wise stewardship of <coughs> water resources and financial resources. The city of Portland has a national reputation for its long-standing track record uh, where innovative ideas turn into successful projects. The project at Anna Mason Pump Station is such a project are keeping costs lower for all Portlanders. I'd first like to acknowledge Alan Mormon, the city's key customer manager from Portland General Electric and member of the Portland Utility Board. We can't do our part to meet Portland's energy needs without the close cooperation of our partner utilities. Energy Trust of Oregon strives to, keep, to help all of our customers get more from their energy. We're a nonprofit organization providing technical services and cash incentives to Portland homes and businesses, as well as to all customers of PGE, Pacific Power, Northwest Natural, mm -hmm. Cascade Natural Gas, and Avista across Oregon, and customers of Northwest Natural and Southwest Washington. The Portland Water Bureau and Energy Trust have something very fundamental in common. We are here to serve. Just as the Bureau has a mission to deliver clear, clean water at the best price possible to its rate payers, Energy Trust has a responsibility to deliver low-cost, clean energy through energy efficiency savings as well as renewable energy generation for 1.5 million utility customers. Portland city leaders and personnel have long recognized eagerly work to leverage Energy Trust efficiency and renewable energy incentives to reduce energy use. Examples include the Columbia Wastewater Treatment Plant and the city's fire stations to the thousands of energy-efficient LED streetlights, and now the energy saving project at the Hannah Mason Pump Station. To date, this bureau alone has completed 59 energy efficiency projects and received $1 million in cash incentives and other services. That's fully one third of all the city savings coming from the Water Bureau. Congratulations to the city and to all of the citizens of Portland for a great project that will save energy and money for years to come. We look forward to it. Mm -hmm. Alan and Alan, uh, as, as you take your turn, um, we want to thank you for your service on the Portland Utility Board. This is uh, your second full year on the pub, and it is, um, uh, reflects our commitment to having more robust citizen oversight, and we appreciate your service. Thank you very much, Mayor Commissioners. It's been said, I'm Alan Warman, the Key Customer Manager to the City of Portland. And I'm here basically to say a first class job in efficiently saving kilowatt hours going forward. The payback on this project is phenomenal. And I really appreciate both in 
terms of uh, talking with the folks at VGE, especially Greg Meyer, watching the partnership between VGE, the City of Portland, and the ETO is the first last way to go. From the public's point of view, this is the right way to do it in terms of funding, and uh, we say thank you very much as well. Thank you. Mayor, this is um, this is listed as a presentation, mm -hmm. so it was just a chance uh, for the Bureau to make this presentation, to thank our partners, and to brag on the employees. I believe there's a check, and I wonder if we could invite the employees who did all the work to come forward and take a look at pictures of us. Let's do it. Show me the money. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how much of that's going homeless. <laughs> hey, what's up? I'm going to jail today. What you doing? Huh? There was a paperwork snafu on my sentence. The judge ordered that Change that name I have to leave if um, one of the leaders in that building tells me I have to leave. But on the paperwork, it says that I must leave all city buildings. <laughs> so they're going to arrest me for that. I've already been approached by security. They're going to arrest me for that. I go, are you asking me to leave? They go, no. So they're going to arrest me for a violation. I'm going to go see the judge, and the judge is going to flip, and then I'm going to have another lawsuit. Then I'm going to